Hey, Coach. How's it going? Um, you can just give us a quick uh, opening statement, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Okay. Well, you know, I thought the second half was a lot better than the first half. Um, you know, I thought we defended really well in the first half, but we didn't play offense very good, very well. Not that we were missing shots or anything. We didn't, I didn't think we had great spacing. Um, I thought the ball was sticking in our hands a little bit. Uh, we weren't moving the defense to, to get the shots that we needed to get. And so I wasn't very pleased at halftime. Now, rebounding was reach. I thought in the second half, we turned it up and uh, played a lot better. We had 15 assists on eight. We had, we had 18 assists on 28 bats. We had 15 turnovers. Some of those were very sloppy. Some at the end. Shot free throws well, rebounded it better. And then, you know, Alondis just showed his, um, his unselfishness to be such a great scorer to have a triple-double. But he had 16, 14, and 10. Um, he, played, uh, he played a really, a really, a really good game. Um, had pretty good balance. Uh, Dallas played really well. Carter got it going. Carter shot it really well, especially in the second half. Played with a lot of confidence. Glad to see him do that. You know, and we had different people again, you know, stepping up and having good games when other guys maybe didn't play as well as they play, but that's part of being on a team. So I'll open it up to questions. Steve, how happy were you with the first half performance in terms of your team wasn't shooting it well, but they yeah. played good defense to, to kind of give you a little bit of a working margin at the half? Oh, no question. If we hadn't played good defense, we would have been in a dog fight, you know, and that's why you have to defend because – you know, we're not going to shoot 60% from the field every game like we did at Virginia Tech. You know, I think we do shoot the ball well, but we did it in the first half. Maybe did we settle for too many threes? Maybe a little bit. But, guys, you got to – that's what they're giving us, too. And, and we, we, we have to play with confidence. And I give our guys a lot of confidence on offense. So, I mean, you know, we, we got to step up and make them. But definitely the way we defended, um, you know, that's why we had the lead. So I was happy about that. I thought it carried over for the most part in the second half as well. So I don't know what they ended up shooting. 32%, 24 for three. Those are winning numbers. Steve, at what point did you realize how close Alondis was to the triple-double? Uh, it would have been that, I don't, I don't know if it was an eight-minute media timeout or there was a timeout in there. I always kind of glance at the stats. Uh, and I saw that he needed one assist. And so I told him he had about a minute to get it. And uh, they, were, they all knew. And so I think they were trying hard to – Cam kept shot faking and driving when the line just passed it to him. We were wanting him to shoot it. But then he threw a dime in there to Dallas. And I was really happy to see him get it because Lucas was at the table and he was coming out. And uh, he, he, he delivered right there at the end. Do you have any idea that that's just the second triple dug double in Wake Forest basketball history, with the other one being Tim Duncan? Well, my crack sports information director, Lucy, told me that as we were walking down the hallway. I said that's pretty uh, rarefied air. I also heard that Len Chapel had one in 1960, but we weren't keeping assists as an official stat at that time. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, uh, good, for, you know, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, it's hard to do. I don't, I, I don't know, maybe had one player, maybe in my career that got had has gotten a triple double. I mean, it's it's impressive. Steve, I know we're you're probably tired of us asking about whether you saw this coming with Alondis having this good of a passing game and that kind of thing. But again, just can you can you talk about uh, how good he's been as far as his all around game and not just being a slasher. Yeah, Connor. I mean, he's he's been fabulous, um, and more importantly, he's been a fabulous teammate. And as you can tell by the reaction of our players, they they want him to do well. They they respect him, and respect is not something that's given; it's earned, especially when you're a new guy like that. And he's he's earned it from his teammates. Um, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but as 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 happy as I am that he can score the ball. I'm more happy the way he passes it and the things that he sees, the way he can look one way and go the other, the way he skips it, how he drives it to the basket and dumps it off to the open guy. He's always looking. And that's why I was imploring our guys when he has the ball in transition 
to run, to run, because he's looking for you. He's looking for you. He's not looking for himself. And uh, that's a rare, you know, it's a pretty rare quality that you get on a, on a player like that. You know, he really, he, he rebounded. Really, I've been on him about rebounding the guards, about rebounding down, and, and he did it tonight. Okay, I'll bite. What's in the glass? That's Gatorade. Okay, Gatorade. All right, that's. I think we're sponsored by them. I'm not sure. Ooh. What exactly? What exactly is going on with this outfit, there, Steve? With the what? With the with your outfit. What what is all this? Well, I mean, this is we had the, the best promotional gift to ever be given out. This cousin, this vintage uh, cousin Eddie hat, you know, and then it says like here, like not the brightest bulb. That's you know. That's me. That's Clark, you know, and I got the Marty Moose glass, you know, so I'm all, I'm decked out and, you know, I didn't want to disappoint. I think a lot of people wanted me to probably wear it during the game, but there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, I, I respect the game more than that to do that. Second of all, um, I would have sweat so bad. I would have, it would have fogged my glasses and I couldn't have seen what was going on. So I had to make the game, the decision not to wear it during the game, but I thought, you know, it was fun, you know, to have that, promotion tonight our, our marketing people do an incredible job thought we had a great crowd it's getting better and better really ha was pleased to have so many people in the stands we'll continue to get better and follow this team thanks coach appreciate it all right boys see you we got alondis williams here so questions for alondis alondis first off you and tim duncan I mean, officially or, or it when it comes to triple doubles, what's that feel like to, to kind of hear your name with his? Man, I feel great. That man, a legend, you know, Hall of Famer. That feel great. I thought it was Chris Paul, but you know, I'm still grateful though. So it was that's good. Alondis, were you hunting that last assist there for a couple of minutes? Yeah, I was hunting for a minute, you know, because my team they had my back. They was telling me, man, come on, like we got you. You gonna give give us the ball? We gonna shoot it. You know, Cam took a long time to shoot a couple of times and I seen Dallas cutting on the other side of the block and I was like, I'm finna just throw it. And he had laid it up and I was like, man, there it go. Did you know that Lucas at the table was coming in for you? Yeah, they told me um, in a time they said, hurry up, hurry up and get this triple double. So Lucas will come in. I said, I, I got you, Lucas. <laughs> Alondis, have you ever uh, recorded a triple double in your career um probably not since juco but it's it been a while so you know i'm real grateful you know what's that feeling like to record a triple double um it, it feel real great you know you feel, now you know that you you know you did everything around all around you know in the game you ain't just score you ain't just rebound you know you, you contributed everywhere on the court and i you know my teammates had my back Londis, what do you think is more difficult if you're just a little bit shy of a triple-double? Would it be tougher to get a couple points, get a rebound or two, or try to get that last assist or two? Uh, it was kind of hard to get the last assist because, you know, you never know what your teammates going to make it or not. So, But the only, only thing you got to do is just believe. So, In terms of the actual game, Alondis, how important was it for you guys to kind of stay locked in in the first half defensively when shots weren't necessarily falling for you? Um, I want to say it was hard, you know, it's just, I ain't gonna lie, a little condition, you know, we've been out for a little bit, but, you know, we picked it up in the second half. We was, we, you know, coach got on us in the um, locker room talking about how bad our defense was and how we were just letting them just get offensive rebounds and stuff. So, you know, we had to just push it as a, as a team, cause you know, we had to get our own stuff, our own energy. Cause you know, we ain't want to lose, you know, lose a game, you know, like you've been seeing other teams top teams losing, you know, teams like this. So we couldn't let that happen to us. Anything else for Alondis? All right. Thank you, Alondis. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you.